Believe in Your Dreams by Creative Katie. That's me, Karen Burchill. So right now you're looking at my homemade art journal and I'm using the Happy Planner or the ARC notebook system rings. This is the Happy Planner one and this is the, the punch that I use to punch out the papers. So now I can just easily take out the one single paper, work on it, and not get the rest of my book all messed up. And I can have a flat surface to work. So these, these papers, if you go and see the video that I talk about how I put this together, um, you can see how the papers, they break off the coil before very long. And I had only used about a, half a dozen of these pages. So I solved the problem and making my own. Now this paper is only 110 pound and it's um, artist quality sketch paper. It is not mixed media paper. So you see it buckling and when I put on the coat of gesso. So I spend some time kind of straightening it out and extra drying it. But it's not high quality mixed media paper for sure. And that accounts for some of the problems that I've had with it. So I always apply a coat of gesso at the beginning. Um, just to prepare the paper for more work. And I think it's really important when um, the paper is a little less than the full mixed media paper. So I bought this brand new stencil when I was out shopping with Kim and Amy and I just had to use it. Right after I saw it, I said, I, I just imagined putting modeling paste through it. So of course, that's the first thing I have to do is put some modeling paste through it. Now this is light modeling paste, but it has dried somewhat. So it's a little thicker consistency. And actually, I'm really good with that because I don't mind. I spent a lot of time trying to avoid the punched out areas. And I don't know why I did because it's just you can go in and clean them clean it out of the out of that very easily so I would have maybe arranged it differently had I realized that sooner on I'm using this wide um, palette knife I also like using a credit card so there you see me just kind of cleaning out any any paint that might get in there. I think one thing to make sure when you're putting this back into your book, you got to make sure that everything is perfectly dry. So I wouldn't, I would wait overnight before I put it back in the book just to be sure because it is only paper. So I am getting out my dilutions paints and I'm returning to my happy color zone of the pink, purple, and teal. I'm not a big fan of this pink though because it is really bright. It's bubblegum pink bright and the purple. So, but I do like this technique. So when I'm put, putting on the dilutions paint with the applicators, and of course it's a little rough because I do have the texture paste there, I'm just putting on getting the first coat of color down. I'm not too worried about working it into all the group nooks and crannies of the texture paste. So it's very blockish. And then you start to play and apply more layers and you go over the edges so that the edges, you don't have that sharp edge, you know, in between one color ends and the next color starts. And that just takes time, you know, and I just do it till I, till I like what I see. But if you play enough, now I'm also finding that I'm really liking when I go over with the purple or the teal over top of the um, whatever color exists on top of the texture paste because it's giving it a little bit more um, depth, kind of highlighting it. There's a little bit of white in the nooks and crannies on the texture paste and I wasn't too concerned about it and it didn't bother me to go in and get it. Now I did thought I would try to get some of that paint off through a stencil, but that didn't work. So I'm just patching up the little bit of paint that I did manage to take off. And I'm just going to stencil on. Just the same stencil, one stencil, one page. You know, you don't need to have five different patterns and ten different colors. Sometimes less is more. And I think that's a hard thing to do in art journaling sometimes. We need to edit ourselves. I find I'm much happier when I 
keep it simple and build some kind of cohesiveness into my page. So I'm just working. I'm really liking how the extra layer of teal on there just shows up. As always with the dilutions paints, I take the time to get that paint out, put it onto a paper towel or a, right here a coffee filter and that just takes time. So I've sped up this part of the video really quick but I want to show you that you do need to take the time to do it and even if you're making videos you do take that time. So here's a stamp that I bought at Michael's, the wooden block stamp. These are these are butterfly stamps and I'm unsure of how I want to set up the page so I'm going back to just stamping in some of it, some of what I think I might want onto deli paper and then trying to arrange it. And it's a good thing I did because when I did that I realized the other butterflies just didn't seem to fit. They, they just didn't do what I wanted them to do. So I kind of went to a plan B. It's a quick easy way to check. So instead of using the ink pad I'm going to use Dilutions Paint applied with a, with a makeup sponge and I'm just pressing. So now I'm going to clean off the stamp and mask off the, the writing part and just use the stamp for the butterflies. And I want to kind of make a, I'm not sure, is it a flock of butterflies or a swarm of butterflies? I don't know what it is. But I want more butterflies kind of going across the page. And as much as I have trying to avoid the texture paste at times, I'm not getting it so that I'm not necessarily getting a solid black print. But I like the black showing up there, the butterflies kind of through the middle, through that open space. And before I put away the makeup sponge or clean up, I decide I'm going to edge it, go around the edge with the black paint. Not yet, because right now I'm deciding to go over the butterflies and make them, fill them in. And again, because the paper has the texture, this step becomes necessary. It's also something I often find I do with my stamps to just make it that much darker or to make it my own. Remember, you don't have to use the stamps as they are. You can edit them any way you wish. They are simply a starting point. So I've thinned the dilutions paint just a little by spraying a little bit extra water with the mister into the lid there. And I had got out my liner brush, but this round brush seems to work quite well. But use whatever brush you're most comfortable with. So there I am edging the borders. And again, there's black in the middle, so you want to bring the black again. Instead of introducing another color, do that again. So I'm getting out my Uniball Signo. Oh, not yet. Just going over the stamp in with my Micron pan, just again to make it that much darker so it stands out. And there's my Uniball Signo, and I decide that I'm going to outline all the parts of the texture paste. So I think I show you the first part of this, and then I do the rest off camera, because you don't need to see me watch, you don't need to watch me do this. Um, it's a little bit tedious and stuff, but it, I think it was well worth it in the end. Right about now I get the idea for my next page and I will be doing another page using the same stencil very quickly. So here is a here is the final page with it all outlined and I really do like it. It, um, it blends together nicely and I like how it turned out. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. Till next